Good morning. Good morning. Well, welcome to worship this morning. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Praise God. We are celebrating today uh, the confirmation of three of our students. And so I'm glad that you're here to celebrate with us as we uh, continue to keep our confirmands in our prayers as they make this important step in their journey of faith. Something they've heard from me from time to time is this is not the end. This is only the beginning, and we'll uh, reflect on that a little bit throughout the service as well. A couple other announcements before we begin our worship. We continue to hit the bottle for babies. Uh, there is an ongoing fundraiser for First Choice Pregnancy Center in Morristown. On the table out in the narthex, you can grab an empty baby bottle. The idea is from Mother's Day through Father's Day, we collect loose change, coins, dollar bills, checks, whatever you want to do, and then bring those back on Father's Day, and then we give that to the First Choice Pregnancy Center. There's a little bit more information about who they are and what they do in the bulletin, and a quick Google search will tell you everything else that you need to know about them. But um, it's, a, it's a good fundraiser for a very good cause, a very good purpose. Uh, also, you will see um, on both sides in the narthex now, on one side you'll see our giant rocket ship. That is our ongoing fundraiser for those getting ready to go to the National Youth Gathering this coming summer. On the other side, you'll start to see some of the faces that are going. We have 14 people from our congregation that are going, along with a few others from other churches. And we will be one group of very many, about 25,000 that will be down in Houston this coming summer. And so you'll get a chance to write some notes of affirmation. As we get a little bit closer, we'll invite you to uh, support our, our trippers, our participants, in a variety of different ways. But at least you can start to see some of the faces of those who are coming able to come with us. And then finally, um, if you have name tags in your uh, mailboxes, we just want to put that reminder out there to uh, wear them as people, you know, kind of come back from being under a rock for the last two years. Uh, some of us may look a little different. Some of us may be completely brand new. Uh, so we just want you to keep that in mind, put that on as you grab it out of your mailbox and come in and worship with us. It's a good way for uh, especially those who are newer to the church to get to know some of the names and faces that um, are in the pews with you this m each morning. No other announcements from me, so we rise, we turn, we greet one another, we shake some hands, give some hugs as we begin our service together.
make our beginning together this morning in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with our Easter acclamation, a declaration that Easter still lives on, even in the weeks afterwards. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are forgiven. In a moment of silence, we go before our Lord now to confess our sins to him. I invite you to kneel or to remain standing, however you are most comfortable, as we go before our Lord's throne of grace to confess our sins to him. Indeed, God's grace knows no bounds. Through the sacrifice of his son, the bridegroom of the church, he makes us his holy bride, anticipating the heavenly wedding feast. Let us seek God's grace now and call upon him for forgiveness and for mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, for we cannot help ourselves. Forgive us all that we have done in the past. Give us grace in this present time and lead us to serve you and love one another in the future and on into eternity. Jesus has promised his disciples, your sorrow will turn into joy. And he promises also the spring of the water of life without payment. These promises are ours as well, as God has promised to turn our sorrows into joy. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We rise as we sing together in celebration and thanksgiving of that day when God called us to be his own. Lord be with you. We join our hearts together in a word of prayer. O oh, gracious God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, 
our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the, to the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. Our Holy Gospel for this Confirmation Sunday is according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. You missed that part. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. Now I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them all now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. For all that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated.
couldn't find my clicker, so I had to run up and down those stairs. That's all it takes now. <laughs> Apparently I'm out of shape. No more teachers, no more books. No, how does it go? No more classes, no more books, no more teacher dirty looks. It's what we say when we're in high school. It's what we say probably any time of the year when we are very eager, very excited for school to come to an end. And so we come today to Confirmation Sunday. But the title itself tells you all you need to know. This is not a graduation. Sure, there may be no more classes. There may be no more books. There may be no more pastors strikingly good looks. <laughs> but it is not a graduation. That's an important thing for you three, Sean, Brody, and Nicole, to hear. Because oftentimes within the church, people see confirmation as the end, the period at the end of a very long sentence. It's over, it's done. But that's not the way it works. That's not the way it's intended to be. Unfortunately, though, the statistics show one of three things is likely to happen, and so it's very fitting that I can say this to three of you because the math works out pretty well. And so, Don, if we can click to the next slide here, please. It's going to be a little clunky now. Maybe? Nope. Well, that's okay. To one of you, I could say goodbye. See ya, it's been nice knowing you. Because the statistics show that at least one third of all students who are confirmed in the church really never set foot in the church again. That's just the numbers, that's the reality. That's not the desire of any pastor, of any parent, of any student. That's just what happens. Confirmation becomes a graduation of sorts. To the next, I could say, see you at Christmas, because about a third of people show up in church, but they show up on Christmas, they show up on Easter, and maybe a Mother's Day or some special service like that in between. And to the other, I could say, see you next week. Although the statistics and the numbers show that a growing least small percentage of students stick around. These are the numbers, this is the reality. And so I share that not to warn you, not to shame you or guilt you, but just to say with great hope and confidence, I'll see you next week. And if not next week, then the week after that. And if not the week after that, then you better believe I'll come calling. Because today is not a graduation. Unfortunately, though, that's the reality. People see days like this, confirmation, as an end of sorts. Not just here at King of Kings, not just within the Lutheran Church, but across the denominational spectrum and across, really, the religious spectrum. For far too many families and young people, once their coursework is over, they're done. That's another part of their life that they can complete. It's finished. It's over. But that's not the way it is. In fact, the reality is, is that because you as young Christians now walk out the door, it's going to be much harder for you to walk back in. Why? Because you're getting to be young men and a young woman. Your priorities are demanding. Your requirements are growing. The list of commitments that you have are going to only continue to abound. And so as much as today is a day of celebration, we also have to understand that what happens on a day like today 
Even though all your family are here and they're so proud of you and they're going to shower you with wonderful words and probably all sorts of expensive gifts, there's also something else that you don't see that takes place today. Excuse you. (laughs) That's funny. If I did that, no one would be laughing. (laughs) That's what happens when you hit the bottle before church, though. (laughs) What you don't see is that the devil has painted a big old target on your back. Nicole, Brody, and Sean, the devil sees you as easy prey. He sits on his tainted art, and he says, all right, these young, hotshot little kids think they're good little Lutherans now, impressive little Christians. Just wait till they see what I have in store for them. And so as much as we think we can try to get through this life on our own, apart from fellow Christians and even apart from the church, God has something else in store for us today. That gospel reading that we heard today was a similar one, part of what was read last week. Jesus as the good shepherd. Jesus as the one who continues to care for us as his sheep. Jesus says that this world is full of wolves who want to to devour the sheep. And the sheep, when they are not in the sheepfold of the shepherd, are easy prey. You cannot be a lone Christian. That's the message of Scripture. You cannot go through this life thinking, you know what, I'm going to do God my way. I'm going to take God on my terms and expect to come to the end apart from any sort of assistance or help that God has provided in the process. God gives to us this place, the church. Again, not King of Kings specifically, but he gives to us the church, the sheepfold, where he cares for us, where he continues to provide the very things that we need. Because make no mistake, the world is filled with wolves that are going to try and attack you, try to destroy you, try to confuse you, and try to convince you that you don't really need this whole Jesus thing. In just a few minutes, you are going to share your own personal stories and testimonies where you have seen God shown up in your life. And the devil will spend all of his time convincing you, trying to convince you, that that's really not that big of a deal. That Jesus really isn't all that important. But don't let the devil win the day. In the gospel reading, we heard these words. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. The point Jesus is making here is that, Sean, nobody is going to love you like Jesus loves you. Brody, nobody is going to care for you like Jesus will care for you. Nicole, no one will sustain you like Jesus will sustain you. There is no one, no parent, no future spouse, no group of friends, no coach, no teammate that will ever be there for you like Jesus. I think it was you, Brody, in your face statement, spoiler alert, that said, God's got my back. There is no truer words than that. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And if you try to seek peace and life and strength and sustenance anywhere else in this world, you are going to be left empty. No one can feed you. No one can care for you like Jesus can. This is the image Jesus provides for us. 
a shepherd fending off a wolf, keeping the prey safe, and keeping the predator at a distance. This is what Jesus does for you. Every time you show up, every time you pray, every time you read scripture, and I tell you to show up not because I want to, not, not because I'm interested here specifically in this place. This is not about padding the attendance numbers or making sure we have a balanced budget. It's because Jesus says, this is where I feed you what I and only I can feed you. This is where you receive my word. This is where you get my body, my blood for you. And so you can never come to the end of needing your good shepherd. That's why today is not a graduation. Nicole, today is only the beginning. Sean and Brody, this is only the start of your lifelong journey with the Lord. And it may go through some bumps along the way. There will be those many mountaintop experiences, but there will also be those times when things seem to crater out and valleys in which you wonder, God, are you still there? Are you listening? But the promise Jesus makes to us is that no matter how far you stray, you are always welcome back. You will always be welcomed back into the sheepfold. There will never be a time where you can outrun or outwander the grace of Jesus. This is a beautiful message for you today to hear. That you are always welcome in the hands of your Savior. That the grace that God possesses is far greater than any sin you can commit, any guilt you can carry. That Jesus is always here. He always has your back. Today is not a graduation, but a day where you take your place at the altar. We started the worship service celebrating and singing about being called by God in baptism. In baptism, Jesus says, Brody, you are mine. Sean, I love you. Nicole, you belong to me. You are part of my church. That's the gift and promise of baptism. Today, you three respond. You stand up before your family and the church and say, God, thank you. I love you too. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your commitment to us as your people. Lord, we know that you are faithful. We know that we don't deserve it. We know that there are times when we often stray, but you have promised that we are the sheep. And if we listen to the voice of our good shepherd, you will be there. You will always have our back. Lord, we pray for Nicole and for Brody and Sean that today indeed would not be a graduation, but only the beginning of a life committed to you as members of the church and as eager and excited disciples of the Savior. We pray in his name. Amen.
So as I mentioned, each one of our students has written a faith statement. And their faith statement was simply their own personal testimony, their relationship with Jesus up until this point on paper. A chance for them to wrestle with and, and grapple with what God means to them and how God has been showing up in their lives. And so one by one, they are going to come up and share those faith statements with us. Brody, you are up first. And so I invite you to come forward. And I did assure them that no matter how they do, you guys who are all Christians have to be nice to them. And so you have to clap and you have to affirm them and encourage them. So, Brody, you can go right into the pulpit there as you share your faith statement with us. Good morning. My name is Brody Halleck. I am a 13-year-old eighth grader. I was baptized at King of Kings when I was six months old as were all my brothers, cousins, uncles, and my father. I am an active, sociable kid who believes in God. I think about him and try hard to do things the right way because I know he is listening and I want him to know I care. I continue to pray before bed and talk to God like he is my friend. I play on a club baseball team, travel basketball team, and football team, so with my schedule, Sunday mornings do not always work out for me and my family. It has been tough prioritizing a sport where my entire team does not get let down if I do not make a game or a tournament. I don't feel like I let down God when I'm not there because I'm always talking to him and praying to him. I feel like we have a good relationship and he understands me as a kid. My parents both talk to me about God and faith. I will always follow God as, he be as I know he believes in me. I know as I grow up, my faith will continue to grow stronger, as God will always have my back. It makes me happy to know heaven exists for those that believe, and that I have God to pray to. This this is the verse I chose, and the reason why. Matthew twenty one twenty two. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. I picked this verse because the Lord is telling me, if you have faith, all things are possible in this life. I work very hard at everything I do, and it helps knowing God is with me all the way. I guess I just want you all to know I'm happy to be a part of this church and glad that I can be confirmed through God, Jesus, at the same church that my entire family has been a part of. Thank you for taking this time to listen to me. I mean, next <laughs> faith statement. Come on up, John. Hi, my name is Sean Galloway. I am from Boone Township, and we're going to Mountain Lakes High School next year. My grandma and my dad went to this church when they moved from Nebraska to New Jersey. My dad was confirmed at this church in eighth grade. My, f my faith has grown tremendously since my baptism. God has helped me by, God has helped me, um, wait, sorry, God has helped me 
do this by being there for me every step of the way. When I was younger, I did not pay attention to the sermon at all. When I started going to Sunday school, I'd have fun in the younger classes meeting new people. I didn't really realize the real meaning of coming to church besides thanking God and Jesus for an hour every Sunday. Then a couple years ago, I found out why I was trying to go every Sunday. This is because Jesus died on the cross for us. Lucky for me, I was able to grow up with great parents and a great family. With my, par with my parents bringing me to church as a kid and trying the best they could to make every week, it shows me that I need to keep going to church. Growing up, whatever decision I made, my parents and God were there for me. One very hard time that God helped me get through was my ACL injury. In September of 2021, I tore my ACL in football. I was devastated, but then I had a look at the positives. Before going into surgery, I was very nervous, but I knew God was on my side. I knew that my family was praying for me, and I was going to be okay. Now I'm six months out of ACL surgery, and I'll be back for next year's basketball season. It has not been easy going to physical therapy three days a week and missing the sports I love, but I know Jesus died for me, so I will make sacrifices for him. One Bible verse that inspires me is 2 Chronicles 15.7. It says, But as for you, you will be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. This relates to sports, school, and life in general. If you work hard for something, you will be re rewarded. This can relate to me returning for basketball and lacrosse season. If I work hard in rehab and trust that God is there for me, I will be rewarded with coming back to sports, ready to go, and to succeed. The most important part is that Jesus died on the cross for you, and to always remember that. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. Everything that God does for you in life has a purpose. Even if it is negative, the end result will always be good if you have faith and trust that Jesus died on the cross for you. After confirmation is not an end to my faith. I still have to show up at church as much as I can because I could become closer with God and Jesus. This serves as a good example for my brother and sister to do the same. Since I trust and believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, I will be on the right path to go to heaven. This is what I want to confirm my faith. as teachers and as pastors you're not supposed to have favorites but Nicole has definitely been my favorite female student this year <laughs> by far and it hasn't even been close so Nicole why don't you come up and share your faith statement with us Good morning, my name is Nicole Kangas and I will be getting confirmed this morning. I go to William Annan Middle School and I've been a member of King of Kings since Pastor finally put in our papers. Um, I would go to church almost every Sunday and attend Sunday school and confirmation class. I never mind going to any of these, but sometimes uh, because I have to go or I want to go, I would uh, have to miss some of my Saturday evening plans and some of those would be canceled. But Overall, I liked, I always enjoyed going. The Bible verse I chose today was Matthew 21, 22, and it states, if you believe, you will receive whatever you asked for in prayer. I chose this verse because back in the end of 2021, I lost my grandfather. During the time he was moving between the hospital and rehab was when I was praying the most during that time. And it's probably the most praying I've ever done in my life. I prayed to God to make him healthy again. 
When my grandfather died, I was mad at God that he didn't fulfill my prayer, but I realized that he was healthy and happy again back in heaven, so overall, I guess he did do that. And another time where I also felt like this was I struggled with my body image for a long time. I would lay in bed wondering um, why God made my body like this, and as I got older, I got more self-acceptance, and it's a journey which I'm finally starting to see the finish line to. And I did realize that God did, me, did make me in a perfect image, and his, it was his image. His image is a perfect image, so it's not like God can really fix his perfect image in a way. There's people who've always told me that you're getting confirmed and eventually, and it'll be, it's the end of your journey. But it's not really, because it's only, this is like the beginning. You're learning, you're learning what God's like and how to stay with him forever. And it's just the very beginning of your lifelong journey with God. And I want to get confirmed today so I can show what I believe. I want to be able to say that this is what I believe and not just what my parents want me to believe. And, uh, and everything that I believe that um, Jesus Christ came down to save us from our sins, that everything in the Bible is true, and I believe in the Holy Trinity, the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening to my confirmation speech, and have a good rest of your day. Sean, Brody, Nicole, please rise. Grab your cheat sheet. You have each been baptized and now catechized in the Christian faith, according to the Lord's bidding. Jesus says to us, whoever confesses me before men... I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. And whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of our Lord. Do you on this day, and in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave to you in your baptism? If so, then answer together, Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his work and all his ways? What? Okay. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sitted at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And so now do you all hold to the prophetic and apostolic scriptures? Do you believe the Bible to be the inspired word of God? If so, then answer loudly, I do. That was loud-ish. Do you confess the doctrine of the Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned it throughout catechism, confirmation, and Sunday school to be faithful and true? <laughs> Try that again. Do you? Okay. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Make me believe it, jeez. I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word and deed, to remain true to God, God alone, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to the death? If so, then answer loudly and proudly, I do by the grace of God. Nicole, Brody, and Sean, do you intend to continue to be faithful and steadfast in this confession and belief in the church, and to suffer all things, even death, rather than to fall away from God? If so, then answer, I do by the grace of God. We then rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and received the teaching of our Lord. You have confessed then the faith that has been that which absolves your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and to receive his sacrament, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I now invite the rest of your family and the entire congregation to rise as we join our hearts in a word of prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the children of our congregation for all children, that they may be faithful to their baptismal vows and to remain in the covenant of that Christian faith. We pray for the parents in our congregation. We pray for all parents, that they may be found faithful in the responsibility of raising their children in faith. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our confirmands this morning, for Nicole and Brody and Sean. We pray that their confession of faith in Christ freely and publicly given, may continue to shape and influence their lives. Equip them with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that they may always be prepared to give an account for the hope that is within them. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that you would give to each of us the continued blessings of your Holy Spirit, that we receive the truth from you. Embolden us to make an unhesitating witness to the faith once delivered to the saints. Unite all your people throughout the world that your church may be one voice in witnessing to you, the re creator and redeemer of all. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated as I invite the confirmants and their parents to come forward. Brody, one of the verses you picked at one point <laughs> was John chapter 8, verse 12, where it says, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whether it's this verse or God's promise that whatever you ask for in prayer, he will be there to listen and to provide. May this day indeed 
to be the beginning, that you would continue to know through any season of life that God has your back, that he is always with you. I pray that you will continue to speak to him, whether it's while you're sitting in the pew or playing on a ball field, that you would continue to trust in the Lord and know that he is in charge and that he is taking care of you. We pray. I invite you to put your hands on your son or on your brother gently (laughs) don't give him a wet willy or anything like that save that for later dear god in heaven we give you thanks for brody we pray that you would continue to watch over him grant him faith that he would know that no matter the darkness of this world you are the light And that as long as he trusts in you, as long as he continues to follow you, you will never let him stumble or fall in darkness. For you have promised all who trust in you that you are always going to be with us. May this day be the beginning of his lifelong journey with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Sean Andrew Galloway, your confirmation verse, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 7. But you take courage, do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. You have already gone through many trials and hardships. As the Lord has brought you through them, he will continue to bring you through all hardships of life. But working hard is still important, not because we have to earn God's favor or earn our way to salvation, because that's already been taken care of. But the life of a Christian is not an easy one. And so may this day be the day that you look back to so that you know, as you have committed yourself to the Lord, he also has committed himself to you. We pray. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for your faithfulness to us as your children. Lord, it is an important thing for us to hear to take courage, because in this world we will have hardships, whether they come in the form of torn ligaments or other ailments. We know that this world is filled with sin and grief and despair, but you have told us to take heart, to take courage, because you are with us. Lord, I pray that you would continue to watch over Sean, that he would continue to be a faithful example to his family, to his young brother and sister, as what it means to be committed fully to you. Lord, we thank you for his resilience. And more than anything, we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus, which we know has secured our salvation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Nicole Ann Kangas, Matthew 21, 22. Jesus said, whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Nicole, you shared a powerful testimony, but one that also understands now that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, created in the image of God and loved by God. He has given his very life for you. And so no matter what comes in this life, in your coming move, or wherever the Lord will lead you, he will always be with you. And the testimony that you shared with us today will be your ongoing witness to whomever you meet. We pray. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for Nicole and for the faith that comforts and strengthens her. Lord, we know that we have been created in your image. We are beautifully made, and we are redeemed by the precious blood of our Savior. And so we know that in this life, in the face of death, loss, grief, or uncertainty, that you are with us. Lord, continue to watch over Nicole, that she would be resilient in her faith, and that she would trust in you always. We pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. We join our hearts together in prayer. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children, Nicole, Brody, and Sean, in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines, that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for their sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You return to your seats. And as they return to their seats, we rise. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We remember the night in which our Lord was betrayed when he took bread broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do as often as you eat in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, poured and shed for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated. This morning we will serve communion by continuous line. Our ushers will usher everyone up the center aisle, starting with this side and then working on to this side. If you are uh, uncomfortable coming up to receive communion, you are invited to either come up and cross your arms and receive a blessing or if you would like to remain in the pew and just continue to worship our God by singing of the hymns, you are absolutely invited to do that as well. We continue with our Agnes Day.
grace. We have each received the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May this gift, the body and blood of Jesus, strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith from now into life everlasting. Amen. We join our hearts again in prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb of his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction, the blessing of our Lord, the promise of God to always go with you, to always be with you, indeed, to always have your back. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his everlasting peace. Amen.